Hey there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and this is going to be a bit of an odd video. Now, for months I've been trying to do a little video about having the fire on board from collecting wood, cutting and putting it in the fire and how that all goes and keeping it burning overnight and all that sort of thing. But unfortunately it just has never quite worked out. And, well, over the last couple of weeks we've had perfect, incredible sunshine, so it was too hot to start doing the fire and showing you properly how it all works. And then, well, if I say this is what the weather's been like for the last few days... Hey folks, remember that great weather the other day? <laughs> You'll appreciate that it certainly hasn't been the sort of weather that I can get out and start collecting and cutting wood and show you properly the whole process. So hopefully this will be a nice compromise video and I'll just show you a little demonstration of the fire in action. This is my little fire on board and as you may instantly see it's a little bit unusual looking. Now this is, well, as far as anybody can tell, an entirely homemade fireplace and basically there's two things that in my, well, two things that I personally think make it rather odd. First of all, all of the openings are on the top, so any fuel like coal or wood goes into the top. Uh, this ring comes out and you can put that kettle on or a pan on, and that sits just inside there, right over the fire. And the top, the entire thing comes off too, but we'll worry about that in a moment. Also, it doesn't have a separate um, air vent. And basically, this here, you can see there's already a little bit of ash come out overnight. But this not only acts as the place to remove the ash, but also to let the air and the draft go up through to obviously control the temperature and how hot or fast the fire is burning. One thing that I do tend to do is have a little bit of wood at the side that if it's been out like how this weather's been recently, if it's been on the roof it'll get a bit wet. So keep it nice and close to the fire so it dries out, but not too close because amazingly I have seen bits of wood start to singe and smoke when it's been at the side there and similarly when I used to have a coal bucket next to the fire the coal in the bucket started smoking which is not what you want. People have asked me about emptying the ash and all basically all the elements of having the fire and so I thought if I show you the empty and I can give you a good look at the inside as well. Right I'll move these out of the way as this is also my little ashtray. Now once again this being such an odd, unusual little fire means that obviously things like emptying the ash and that become, well, a little bit tricky as because it's round, it obviously doesn't have anywhere that you could just scoop out all of the ash because it always is going to be collecting in these side parts here. So if we have a look in through the top first, in fact, for a token gesture, I think I'll at least put on my filthy gloves that I use for um, cleaning the fire. Apologise if it's a little grubby, I normally give it uh, one proper good clean every month and then well it soon starts to get a little bit mucky again. So you can see here this is the little ring that something like the kettle or a pan is perfectly um, sized to fit on. So obviously that gives you a lot of surface over the fire with nothing in between. And I also put baking trays over and things like that and I've been able to make toast incredibly fast off a very good fire. If I just lean this forward so you can have a proper look there. Yep, that's basically just the last remnants of ash of last night's wood and coal. So what I do, because once again with this not being a proper fire, in the, well, proper in the sense of a real um, one that's been made and manufactured for sale, it doesn't have anything to shake the uh, grate to get all the ash off. So I like to just... Scrape around with the old tongs there. And then if we have a look forwards, you can see just at the bottom there, there's the grate. Tip in the ash. And here's a little trick that I've learned. I can then use the fire tones themselves to scrape all of this ash that doesn't come out on the actual ashtray. Well, that looks about clear enough to me. Let's just stick the top back on for the time being. 
and my little tip is always to put this back in so that in the daytime the wind can't blow the ash out of the bottom. Now what to do with all this lovely ash? Well, I have a simple technique, but one plastic bag inside another so it forms a relatively leak-proof um, container and then go outside and tip it in. Obviously this needs to be cold and not in any way warm at all just in case it, well, basically burns through the plastic bag and causes all sorts of chaos and fire. The reason that I do this outside is so that all the dust doesn't fly up and settle on all your furniture on the inside. That's something that I've learned over the last uh, year or so. When it comes to wood collection, I'll just say a couple of words. I basically do just go and collect all sorts of different bits of dried wood that have broken off trees and basically been on the ground and dried out for goodness knows how long. Just take me saw and everybody's favourite, a rusty old axe. And well, just go and fill up some bags and then fetch them back to the boat. But if we have a look out here, you may enjoy this. I learned this fantastic tip that instead of keeping the wood out back or on the roof, I've just got three plastic containers under the front crash cover so if I run out of fuel in the middle of the night I obviously have only got to come and open this door and it's all here literally within arm's reach and well doesn't have to see me going out in the cold and the rain and all that sort of stuff wearing me pyjamas. These two bits of wood here you can see are a little bit thicker and aren't going to fit through the top there but you might also be able to tell that they're a little bit rotten and just not very pleasant looking and I certainly wouldn't normally advise anybody to burn these or burn them myself but just for demonstration purposes because they're going to be so easy to split with the axe I'm going to take them outside, split them down into a few little strips and then that'll be very nice kindling which will quickly burn and easily set a nice good fire going that I can then start putting more of the uh, better pieces of wood on and then later on at night some of my trusty coal. On the subject of coal um, this is smokeless coal which I definitely advise you to use even just for the sake of being on a boat because obviously your chimney's not far away from your windows and you don't want all sorts of horrible bits and pieces of smoke blowing into the boat. I prefer these larger um, chunks because they tend to be in a lot better through the night. Now the wood's split, it's time to um, get ready to light the fire really. Now you're going to need a little fire lighter. Now these come in big blocks and you probably get about 15 of this sort of size in one and I should be able to pick them up for less than a pound. And this is one of my great tips that I've learnt for using this fire in particular. I take a spent match press it into the bottom of the fire lighter but basically because I have to light this from underneath through that there it makes it difficult to know exactly where the fire lighter is and I don't want to be lighting the fire lighter and dropping it in and having all the smoke coming up into the boat and all that sort of stuff while I'm panicking trying to set up the fire so I put the fire lighter in here with the match sticking through the bottom of the grate you can see the match hanging down there so I know exactly where the fire lighter is and well I've put a little bit of wood in there ready but if I grab the matches strike a match let's see what happens Well, that's a good sign there. I keep the drawer out completely for the time being to let a good draft get through so that a nice fire can start raging. And you can see now that after only about a minute or so, it's really caught because that was some pretty dry wood. I think now that that's going so well, I can put the drawer in and that obviously protects you from anything falling out. Well folks, as it gets a little bit later and the rain is starting outside, I will lift the top off. Wow, that's a good fire going in there. And I will drop in the first couple of bits of coal, which will hopefully keep it burning nicely for the next few hours. And then, well, 
not too far away. I'll load it up with maybe five or six pieces. It shouldn't be too um, cold of a night. And that'll do me until tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm very sorry to everybody who's been waiting because this is certainly not the video I wanted it to be. But stay tuned and I will, when the time comes, get out there with me saw and me axe and do some proper talking about collecting wood and cutting and all that sort of stuff, as well as a more in-depth sort of this is how the fire should go and what sort of wood you want and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. My apologies once again that this is not the video that I wanted it to be. And, well, until the next time, make sure you subscribe. Uh, please like the Facebook page. We're on the way to 200 likes now. And, well, very close indeed. So, thank you very much to everybody for joining in the fun with that. And until the next time... Farewell.